welcome to this week's episode of the Sleep Like a Boss podcast, where we're going to talk about histamine and sleep. Um, it's that time of year again, spring's coming, and a lot of people are starting to struggle with allergies, which are in most cases a histamine reaction. And a lot of people that we talk to also take an antihistamine for sleep. And I wanted to talk to you about that today to see if that is actually supporting you or if there's other ways around that, if you do not want to be taking antihistamines and what might be um, going on in your body that would actually um, prevent you from sleeping with regards to histamine. So what is histamine? Histamine is a neurotransmitter, so a messenger in the body that signals the body to do certain things, to release certain enzymes, in the digestive process, for instance, and other things. So what is the actual role of histamine in the body? Histamine helps us with gut motility. So it helps us move food around the system. Um, and it helps with the release of enzymes that help with protein digestion. And it is um, also a neurotransmitter that supports us being awake which if we have sleep issues is something that might be part of the puzzle of what we should be looking into. And um, a lot of people who have histamine intolerance and do not um, tolerate high histamine foods very well actually also do have sleep problems. And when they lower their histamine load in the body, they can actually improve their sleep. And also sleep does um, lower histamine levels in the body as well. So it's a bit of a, a two-edged um, sword. Um, so, and the interesting thing is that sleep medication often does include antihistamines to block histamines and make you a little drowsy. And maybe you've also seen that if you've ever taken an anti-allergy medication that they always suggest to take them at night because they do make you drowsy. And um, if you do take them during the day, you can really, really feel that. Um, so what are symptoms of having histamine issues? Classic ones that you would see is itchy skin, rashes, hives, flushing of the face, migraines, sometimes even dizziness, digestive problems such as bloating, diarrhea, constipation, um, muscle and joint pain is a common symptom that people have with histamine issues. And for women, also PMS and heavy periods speak and, and um, any of these other symptoms that I've just mentioned being worse around ovulation because of an interaction between estrogen and um, histamine because estrogen actually um, raises histamine levels and histamine levels also raise estrogen. Um, so if we have any of these symptoms, maybe we can see, are, are there any foods that I'm eating that might currently be um, contributing to this? So what kinds of foods are high in histamine? What are high histamine foods? Anything that's cured, things like fermented foods, sauerkraut, kimchi, dried fruits, citrus fruits, aged cheeses, alcohol, especially red wine avocados, strawberries, chocolates, chickpeas for some people, not for others, um, raw tomatoes and vinegar, spinach. Um, it's quite a long list of higher histamine foods, but people tend to react to histamine, high, high histamine foods differently. So you kind of have to see a little for yourself and do maybe a little bit of a testing when you eat certain things. Are you experiencing any of these symptoms? Are you getting itchy skin? Are you getting hives? Are you getting flushing? Are you getting digestive upset? Then that might be um, that histamine is triggering um, that reaction in your body. Um, but there's also other things that can cause um, histamine reactions. So food sensitivities is one thing that we just talked about. It could be other foods that you're sensitive to that can, that can trigger this. There are certain bacteria in the gut that can release histamine and that can make the situation worse for people and can affect their histamine levels and with that, their cortisol in their sleep. Leaky gut, that definitely increases uh, histamine reactions. And also if you have a weak digestive system, so if you have low stomach acid or if your uh, pancreas isn't releasing enough enzymes or you're not having a good um, healthy bile uh, made in the liver that could definitely affect your histamine tolerance. And like we talked about just before, estrogen definitely also um, 
has an impact. So if you're a woman who um, struggles with estrogen dominance, um, then histamine is can definitely be linked to that, can be an issue. Um, so how does do these high levels of histamine then affect your sleep? Well, too much histamine in the system causes inflammation. Um, and if we have inflammation, I and mean, we've talked about this before, the body raises its cortisol levels because cortisol is an anti-inflammatory and um, it does that to fight this inflammation. So it fights this excess amount of histamine with that. And this then releases the cortisol and this then will potentially keep you up at night because you might have histamine, uh, you might have cortisol released at times throughout the day where you actually don't want it to happen. Um, also histamine um, causes wakefulness. So like we said in the beginning, people who have a histamine issue, who have histamine intolerance have trouble with sleep. So if you have, if your bucket of histamine is just too full in your body, um, for whatever reason, you've eaten too many high histamine foods, you have gut issues, you have hormonal issues with estrogen, whatever it might be, this can actually cause you wakefulness just through that bucket of histamine, that too high amount of histamine in the body. Um, so is taking an antihistamine then a good idea? That depends. Um, I'm not your doctor, so I cannot recommend anything there. But if we look at how an antihistamine actually works, is it it blocks the histamine receptors in your body so the histamine can get into the cells and do its job there. Um, but what it doesn't do um, is it doesn't actually lower the histamine load in your body because these antihistamines do not um, destroy the histamine, they just prevent it from going into the cells. So as soon as you take the antihistamine away, um, your body's still flooded with histamine potentially, and those problems that were there before, and for a lot of people, those are sleep problems, will come back because they've actually never been solved. So an antihistamine is a bit of a band-aid to instead of getting to the root cause of what the problem is and finding a solution for that. So if you're thinking that you have a histamine problem, what could you do about it? You could, first of all, lower the histamine burden on the body, that would be number one, by reducing the number and the amount of um, high histamine foods that you're consuming. Um, you should, if you have sleep problems, definitely avoid high histamine foods in the evening to avoid that wakefulness. Um, so if you're somebody who eats um, avocados, chickpeas, fermented foods, cheeses, those kinds of things for dinner, take that away, leave the alcohol out, um, because that will definitely impact your histamine levels. Um, generally, also not just avoid histamine foods in the evening, but also avoid eating later at night, because histamine is always released as part of the digestive process. So if you're eating too late at night, you are releasing histamine and that can then impact your sleep because um, histamine is there and will trigger the cortisol reaction and then we don't have enough melatonin to actually go to sleep. Um, support your liver and because the liver helps to break down histamine and one really it's almost like an old fashioned trick to do is using castor oil packs on the liver. Um, and you can also, in order to, to lower your levels of histamine, drinking stinging nettle tea is also a great way to reduce histamine. Um, the other thing that you can do, and this is where, where we would dig in a little deeper. If you were saying, I, I've done this and it's not really working for me yet fully, um, Look into food sensitivities because that's why we run food sensitivity tests with people to see is there anything that's outside of the foods that we just listed? Is there anything that triggers a histamine release that should be eliminated, at least temporarily, while we actually look at the gut? How is your gut health? I, do you have any bacteria in there that are not supposed to be in there that are actually releasing histamine into the gut, into the system, and we don't want that? Are there any pathogens in there that? Um, also cause a histamine and a cortisol reaction. Do you have a leaky gut that needs to be addressed? Um, and the other thing that 
we would also do is we would look at the whole package and see are there certain foods that we need to take out? Are there certain supplements that you can take in order to the, support this whole process? Are there changes in lifestyle that we can make in order to get your histamine levels lower and your body to deal with it better and then support your sleep? Um, there is an enzyme in the body. It's called DAO. And DAO is the enzyme that actually deconstructs histamine. So if DAO works well, people don't have a histamine issue. Um, the interesting thing, though, is for DAO to really work well, it needs copper and calcium. And um, we see it over and over again that people's minerals and nutrients are not balanced and not sufficient. That's why we run a hair tissue mineral analysis, mineral analysis with all our clients. And uh, we do this test to see, for instance, where your copper is, where your calcium is, where your magnesium is, where your sodium and potassium are, to get those in line, especially also for that reason that we see, oh, histamine um, tolerance is a lot better when copper and calcium are in a certain balance and they need to work well in the body together. And if they're not, this can also cause these problems. So um, start taking the first steps if you think this is something that um, you could benefit from by lowering your histamine intake, uh, don't eating the foods at night, don't eat late at night, avoid the alcohol, um, and supporting your liver. And then if this is something that's not working for you, reach out and we can discuss if this, if we think this might be something that we can help you with. And then we would be very happy to support and get you your sleep back. Thank you so much for listening today and have a wonderful rest of your day.